Good morning, everyone. How are, how are we doing today? Awesome, awesome. Okay, so uh, thank you for joining this special event to celebrate four newly uh, promoted associate professor and uh, at the College of Engineering. Um, my name is Luna Lu. I am a faculty at the Lyle School of Civil Engineering, currently serving as the Associate Dean of the Faculty at the College of Engineering. Um, so today we are here to congratulate four outstanding colleagues, uh, Xiao Kang Chu from ECE, Dian Yun Zhang from AAE, Jing Hua Jun from Civil Engineering, and uh, Carrie Douglas from engineering education and please join me to give them a round of applause and to congratulate for that significant milestone <laughs> achieving okay so for today's event we will invite four outstanding colleagues to come here to really highlight um, their uh, impacts and contributions on research on scholarship on teaching and the service, and there is the two elements, right, in, in this. And the number one is to give us some reflection about their journey and to tell us, you know, to share some best practice um, in their different elements of the scholarship. But the second piece I would like to, you know, we hope to hear, it would be what is the suggestions to College of Engineering and your heads are sitting here to continue support, right? Your, and to enable your sustained growth and success at the College of Engineering. Um, and then after that, we will have about 10 minutes for q and uh, with our outstanding colleagues. And with that, to get uh, today's event to start, uh, let me first invite Professor uh, Millian Karkuni, the, the interim head of electrical engineering, and to introduce our first speaker. Thanks, Luna. Uh, so hi, everybody. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, I'm Milan Kulkarni. I'm the uh, interim head of the, uh, I'm supposed to say this exactly nowadays, Elmore Family School of Electrical and Computer Engineering. Um, they, there's a little shock collar that buzzes me if I get that wrong. Um, so I've only been interim head for two months. Um, and so this is the first time that I've gotten to introduce somebody for the celebration of our associate professors. And it, it really, I'm very, extremely thrilled that the person that I do get to introduce for this is Xiao Kang Chu uh, for a couple of reasons. Um, so one, uh, Xiao Kang and I are actually in the same research area. Uh, we both work in compilers and programming languages. Um, I was on the committee that hired him. Uh, I was his mentor uh, assigned to him um, when he started back in 2016, uh, coming off a postdoc at MIT. Um, he teaches a lot of the same classes that I teach. Um, and so it's been incredibly rewarding to watch him uh, blossom as a faculty member over the time that he's been here. Um, and it was uh, my great privilege to, uh, to put him up for tenure last year and he sailed through because he's an excellent faculty member. Um, and so I'm really excited to have the opportunity to introduce him to all of you and for him to get to tell you about the work that he's doing as he's established himself as really a world leader uh, in the space of uh, what we call program synthesis, which he's gonna tell you about. Um, and so, uh, so thanks everybody for being here, um, and uh, thanks Xiao Kang for being such an incredible colleague and collaborator uh, and friend over the years. <laughs> so, here you go. Hi, hi. How's it going? Um, can you hear me? All right. Um, yeah. Thank you very much to uh, Luna and Miling, um, and thank you everybody for being here. Um, this is a very, very special, most special talk I've ever given. Um, when Maria gave me the kind of hinged questions, I was like, wait a second, <laughs> how come I can answer a question like this, right? Mm -hmm. What did you do to succeed, right? <laughs> and that question is for right, senior faculty celebrating their retirement or <laughs> 60th birthday, right? So, um, but later on, I um, become, appreciate the uh, opportunity to get here to share my um, scholarly pursuit and reflect on uh, what I did and uh, think about the directions, the future directions for my research, teaching, and uh, a service. All right, so I got my bachelor and master's degrees in computer science from Nanjing University. Um, so this is a library of the university where I spent a lot of time there. Um, my favorite courses were uh, complexity, uh, computability, mathematical logic, pretty much everything about theoretical computer science. So I said, I, okay, I want to get some 
research experience on theoretical computer science. I talked with a professor. There was only one professor on theoretical computer science in my department um, who taught other courses. I talked to him, and uh, he said no. He, he said he recruit only at, at most one student each year, and the slot is taken. So I was frustrated. I said, OK, let me get some other research experience. So I worked with Professor Xuan Zhong Li uh, on a project on software testing. Um, so it's about how to automatically generate test cases. Um, it's, uh, he's a very nice professor. It's a very nice project. Nothing's wrong. I think my heart is still with, with theory. I think uh, testing is not going to be, uh, you, you will never stamp a uh, correctness stamp on the program, right? So it's testing is, you can always uh, figure out some torn cases that you cannot cover. So how can we uh, formally prove the correctness of the program? Because that's what I'm more interested in. And then at that time, I get to uh, get access to some formal methods and the model checking, right? All these uh, domains of areas um, of research. So I say, okay, I decide to go to grad school for my PhD and uh, my dream school was UPenn at that moment. I, I, I wanted to work with Rajiv Valua on uh, model checking stuff, but I got rejected. So I was frustrated again. <laughs> I said, okay, maybe I should get a job. Uh, so I applied for jobs. Uh, my dream job was Google. <laughs> I got rejected again. I got a bunch of other job offers. But I say, okay, um, maybe I still want to get a PhD. So, um, and I got an offer from uh, UIUC. So that's how I came to US, came to uh, Midwestern cornfield. <laughs> uh, this is a CBO Center for Computer Science. I spent six years there. Uh, my advisor was Madhu Pastrasi. Um, He's a, he's a very special professor. Um, he's so special, he has his own taste of research. He has his own agenda um, and his own criteria of, of research. He, um, and, and he does not really care about uh, who else care about his research. <laughs> it happened to be important pro uh, problems and uh, uh, got appreciated a lot, right? Uh, but to be honest, I don't think he needs any student. He can work on the problem himself. But he's willing to work with students who, share the, um, who are equally passionate about the same research directions. And uh, along the path, uh, they will learn how to, um, how to do high quality research. So my research is uh, about formal verification, basically how to formally verify the correctness of program. And it's a, it has a long history. It's one of the oldest areas of computer science. Um, people have known the principles, people have known how to automatically verify a lot of kinds of programs, but heaps are still one of the most challenging areas. Basically, you can uh, define the, the tree structures, link structures, uh, graphs, etc. right? So they turn out to be super challenging. And my research was on how can we build a new uh, logic and a new decision procedures, a new mathematical weapons to help automated reasoning. And I developed the dried logic, which is the first decidable logic uh, that can verify binary search trees um, for the first time. But binary search trees are still not strong enough. There's way more complicated data structures. So another uh, thing I did as a PhD is to develop uh, natural proofs. This is an automatic verification for a lot of more complex data structures, red black trees, AVL trees. So in the last year of my PhD, I was seriously thinking about academic jobs. I think I have a, a good publication record. I had four popular PLDI papers um, by that time. Um, it's, and my acceptance rate was 100%. I, I, it's, uh, I know it's, I was lucky. I'm, I'm not that lucky anymore. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, um, but I'm not sure I'm ready in other aspects, right? Teaching, communication, presentation, or the other skills needed as a faculty. Uh, but Madhu encouraged me to say, OK, you should apply anyway. You never know. Um, I applied, and then I knew I was not ready. <laughs> um, so, but also, as mean what time I get access to, to learn more about uh, the topic called program synthesis. Um, so program synthesis is very related to program verification. Basically, you 
don't have the program at the beginning, you have the intent, you have the specification, what do you want to have as a program, and we hope to have a machine, a program to generate the program for you. Right? So very related to verification, but still uh, different. Um, I, I become to realize that this is a new, well, a more underexplored area, right? So in verification, it's a more mature, people know all the principles, but in, in, in synthesis, it's still uh, in the case that people don't really know what are the fundamental problems. Uh, so that means more opportunities to, to work on. So I feel like it's a good opportunity for me to explore this area a little bit. And uh, um, Rajiv Alua from UPenn just uh, got an NSF expedition in the computing uh, project. It's a $10 million multi-institution project from NSF. So, uh, and they are recruiting postdocs. So I applied and got the opportunity to work with Armando Solalizama at MIT and also with Jeff Foster at Maryland then. Um, so my work is to uh, get some fundamental uh, research problems solved for synthesis. So one thing is uh, natural synthesis. So I talk about natural proof, it's about verification. And natural synthesis is about how can we synthesize programs. So the fundamental observation is that verification is not too different from synthesis, right? So verification is about searching for a proof, and the synthesis is about searching for a program. And the two jobs need to be done in tandem, so we can do them together, and that's what natural synthesis is. And also we help Java programmers to generate programs automatically. The tool is called Java Sketch. Um, and online these systems, there's going to be a lot of synthesis algorithms, ideas um, going on. And I also, also got the chance to uh, work with Armando. He's nice enough to invite me to co-develop the uh, 6.885. This is the first uh, synthesis curriculum in the US. Um, and uh, I learned a lot. I got a lot of insights from this teaching experience and also bring the um, course adapted version to Purdue uh, as my automatic programming course. Then uh, I'm a boiler maker. Okay, so I still remember the first day of my, well, the day of my interview, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I was quite nervous before my job talk. I, well, this is the only EC department I've interviewed with. I, I'm from the CS background. I interviewed a lot of CS or CSE departments. Uh, do they really understand my research? Will, will they appreciate my research? Right, so I was kind of nervous, and uh, uh, well, Melinda was there in the talk, <laughs> and uh, he was nodding the head. <laughs> so I got reassured a lot. So okay, at least somebody understand my research, right? <laughs> and then he asked the questions. Now uh, he really, really understands my research. Um, that's great. And uh, also, um, I think I remember Sanjay Rao was there, and uh, he asked questions. He got confused with uh, the, the example, and then we keep we kept going on the conversation in our one on one meeting, and also continue on, <laughs> on the dinner. <laughs> I had to open up my laptop and walk through the example to him. So he's he's not in this area, but he's so serious about my research. He's curious, and he's uh, looking forward to see some connection and some collaboration opportunities. And uh, that turns out to be uh, my first successful NSF award after seven <laughs> rejections in a row. So I, I know many people have around have a similar experience, right? So submit, 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 <laughs> reject, reject, reject. So um, yeah, this was the first successful one was with uh, Sanjay. Um, <laughs> I, I, I think I don't have time to talk about the more about project, but basically this is a, a interdisciplinary collaboration. We, uh, and it's very insightful for me to realize that it's not just about uh, the theoretical stuff, it's about how to engage with the user, right? So the network design architects, they don't really know anything about programming languages, say, um, and how to engage with them, how to interact with them uh, in a natural way, right? So that's what the comparative synthesis uh, project is about. And that also helped me shape up my counter research, right? So my past experience helped me to find a sweet spot in the intersection of um, synthesis, formal guarantees, and user interactions, right? So my research is going, like, zooming into this uh, uh, niche area. And I think that's uh, important to make sure that we can generate programs, and the programs are correct, and the, uh, the interaction with user is uh, naturally acceptable, right? So all these targets need to be achieved uh, at the same time. 
Okay, um, this is not the last <laughs> slide. I have another slide for future plans, but uh, I want to take this opportunity to thank everyone who have influ uh, influenced me in this uh, scholarly pursuit, uh, my advisors, mentors, colleagues, um, my academic siblings, um, everyone, on, especially my students, uh, my family, my parents, uh, my wife, Ping, and my kids, Elias and uh, Timothy. So, uh, yeah, thank you so much for uh, helping me uh, along the long path of the uh, scientific journey. Okay, so uh, before I stop, I, I'm supposed to say something about future plan, but I don't really have much to say about it. Um, just got to tell you that it's, uh, it's a good, <laughs> good time to uh, sit down and think about what, uh, what's going to happen next, right? But program things is a rapidly changing area today, right? 40 years ago, everybody knows that it's difficult, and uh, this is a, my, one of my favorite quotes from Alan Perlis, the first uh, Turing Award winner, right? And uh, 40 years later, we have ChatGPT. We got programs generated, and we got a lollipop, right? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so um, I, th I really like large language models. I think that will play a key role in, um, in my future research. Um, it, this is an elephant in the room. Everybody's talking about it, but we don't really know how powerful it is and how, what's the right way to engage with uh, the large language models. So we can leave more conversation up to the questions. Thank you very much. Yeah. So we have, uh, we've got time for some questions uh, for Shao Kang. Yeah. What would you say is the difference between uh, tools like ChatGPT and the program synthesis that you talked about earlier? Um, yeah, so the overall target is similar, right? So program synthesis want to generate programs and large language models can be used to generate programs. In some sense, uh, machine learning in general is also uh, sort of program synthesis approach, right? It's uh, you get you you train the model from the data, and the model is just a black box program. It's it's a program, but you don't understand it, right? So uh, in some sense, they are same thing, but with different focuses, right? So uh, program synthesis is going to be uh, generating white box programs, and the challenge thing is that there's a huge space of programs. How do you well spot the right programs that uh, satisfy your um, your, your intent, right? And uh, um, while machine learning is, uh, is a little bit different, it's, um, um, you, you, you have, it, it, the problem is you have so many programs that can satisfy um, the correctness, right? But how to avoid overfitting, how to find well, the right program, right? So a little bit difference, but um, a, a huge, connection between the two areas and uh, they are more and more converging um, and interacting in, in a lot of interesting recent work. Yeah. So while people are thinking about questions, I had a question. <laughs> okay. um, kind, of, kind of jumping off of um, the question we had here about the overlap between machine learning models or LLMs and, and program synthesis. The, the challenge, the struggle that I always have with, with LLMs or thinking about LLMs for doing, for generating programs <laughs> is that I have, uh, it, to me, it takes away the fun part of programming, which is coming, figuring out how to solve the problem and leaves behind the part that I hate the most, which is figuring out where the bugs are and how to fix them. Do you, do you see an opportunity to, to use some of the techniques that you've come up with to, to kind of help with that process? Maybe you know, you've done a lot of human in the loop kinds of synthesis problems. Is there an LLM in the loop synthesis approach that you could use? Yeah, sure. Um, I, I think let's, uh, large language models are a huge opportunity, right? So to for us to interact with machines uh, in a lot of different interesting ways. Um, my, my vision is that large language models is go, are going to be our personal assistant, right? Just like your research assistant, you talk with uh, the model. What's uh, I want to generate a program? I want to implement something. Go get this job done for me, right? And they, it gets back to you and uh, with a prototype and you give comments and uh, um, suggestions for improvement, right? Just like, uh, pretty much like human interaction. Uh, but we still need to know the underlying techniques. I, I think all we teach, all we uh, have learned from 
program synthesis, right, all the formal methods, languages, uh, reasoning techniques are still there, right? So we still, we still need all these uh, techniques, just like we, we have calculated, but we're still teaching our kids arithmetic, right? So they, <laughs> uh, it's, uh, they, they need to know uh, the inner workings, how, how it's supposed to work, right? If it's, the, the problem is always there, right? So here's the program, how do we, <laughs> the program's correct. It's done by yourself or done by a black box machine? Is a, is a separate thing, right? So I think the underlying techniques are always uh, necessary. We need to we need to learn and, and bake them into the to the larger language models too. Yeah, to but it's not still not clear what's the ideal uh, model of interaction. So I, I was actually just told that we need to move on to the next speaker. In the interest of time, we've got four people to get through. So um, let's thank Shao Kang again. <laughs> <laughs>